Matthew 5, verses 14 through 16. I'm using the New Revised Standard Version, but you may use any version you like. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hidden. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Would you pray with me? God, thank you for this day. Thank you for our ability to get out and into the building today. We thank you even for the weather that we have been through. God, we thank you for your presence. There are only words on this tablet. Hide me behind the cross, Lord. Let your people hear from you and not from me. It is in the name of Jesus that I pray. Amen. The message version puts it this way. Here's another way to put it. You are the light bringing out the God colors in the world. God is not a secret to be kept. We're going public with this, as public as a city on a hill. If I make you light bearers, you don't think I'm going to hide you under a bucket, do you? I'm putting you on a light stand. Now that I've put you here on a hilltop on a light stand, shine. Keep open house. Be generous with your lives. By opening up to others, you'll prompt people to open up with God, this generous Father in heaven. I always like the message version because sometimes it just puts it in everyday language. Last week, weather-wise, was a trip. I don't know about you, but at least for me, it was a trip. It was the first time, well, it wasn't the first time, I'll say that, I won't say that, but it was one of the times I have been very grateful that I am retired because I could close my blinds and pretend that it was there and I was in here. That was up until the point where it continued to rain and rain and rain. And you know that crunchy sound you started to hear? I started to hear that crunching because there are trees around me. And I was like, "Uh uh-oh. Now I have lived where I've lived four years and I have been very fortunate where around me power has been out and I've been very fortunate, I have not lost power. But this time, but I'm still one of these people, I'm really cautious, I'm like, I'm gonna charge everything up just in case. This time I was kinda lazy. And as I started to hear the crunch and I'm like, "Uh uh-uh. Let me go and charge everything up. So I ran in my bedroom, plugged in my electric blanket so the bed would be warm just in case. Plugged in all the computers, realized my computers were already plugged up, so I was pretty good with that. I have a very, very, very old Mac, which I do not want to give away, give up. It is about to give up the ghost job, but I do not want to give it up. So I plugged it up and, and, and my tablet and my phone, and I was still pretty good, but... <clears throat> Nothing. Not the blinky blink. Not that, you know how sometimes you get that kind of warning, it'll blink it. <laughs> nothing. There was a boom and nothing. The power was gone. Just as I got everything plugged up. So I was like, okay, maybe it's going to come back on. <laughs> no. <laughs> nothing. As it happened, you know, the, the heated blanket does warm up pretty quick, so I just kind of got under the covers and was like, okay, well, you know, here I am. I got a little bit of power. And so my daughter, India, called me and she said, Mom, is your power off? Yep, it's gone. 
She said, oh, okay, well, you can come over here. No, I'm good. I'm good. It'll probably be back on in a little bit. Well, it didn't come back on. Next morning, I got up. It was kind of chilly at that point. You know, because it was, it was kind of chilly, you know. She, she called me back. I'm coming to get you because you're not staying in there. It's just too cold. I'm like, I'm fine. <laughs> I went to her house. We ran around, did some running around all day. We sat down finally. She's got a nice fireplace that's blazing. We're talking. Her power went out. At this point, I'm like, you know what? Here's what we're going to do. She calls and one of her friends is out of town. So she, her friend is like, you know, you can use my house. She's got a nice house. And she's like, well, you all can just stay in the house until the power comes back on. I'm gone for a week. I'm like, okay, well, that's fine. But I'm going to go back to my house for at least overnight. And then we'll go there. Well, we drive back to my house and everything's lit up. The whole complex is lit up. So the power's back on. This is a day later. So I'm grateful. But I realize how important light is. See, we take a lot for granted, both power and light. Let's go back to the scripture. This part of the scripture comes in Matthew. Matthew actually tells a story of Jesus' life, and he uses this as part of the Sermon on the Mount. It is actually right at the beginning, right after the blessings, the Beatitudes. And it kind of ties right in the middle there where the Beatitudes started and then he starts talking about you are the light of the world, you are the salt and you are the light. And we believe he's talking to the disciples, but if you think about it, just the way Matthew tells the story, there are only four disciples there. Peter and Andrew, James and John. Now, I don't know about you, and perhaps you were more uh, adept at understanding the Bible than I was, but I've always thought all 12 were there. But only four. So if you think about it, Jesus is setting a foundation for his ministry because he begins to do an awful lot in these stories or in these teachings as he goes on a lot, lot further. But let's look at this. He says, you are the light of Really? You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. The light of the world. Now, even though we think about it, the, light, the world may not have been as big as we think about it now, but these teachings still belong to us. The light of the world. So now with, along with Jesus, Jesus had begun his, his ministry at that point. Now it's still the beginning of his ministry, but he had been going through different cities healing people. So there was a crowd following him. These crowds followed him to this place. Now this, this place is, is noticed here as a mountain. In the other gospel, it is shown as a plain. Doesn't matter. We don't care. Wherever he was, he starts to do this teaching. So here we go, and we've got him sitting here talking about a city on a hill cannot be hidden. The light of the world. What do we know about light? Light is energy. We know that we cannot produce light. But we also know the scripture tells us Jesus is the light of the world. Why then is Jesus telling the disciples and the crowds that they are the light of the world? Jesus knows something about light and energy that we do not know. We know that in the beginning, God said, let there be light, and there was light. So we know that light already exists, so, obviously, Jesus is talking about a light that does not exist in the world at that point. 
So he is talking about a light that he is bringing into the world and that he plans to give to them or to us. It is the only light that he can give to us, this God energy that we must reflect into the world because that's what light can do, reflect. It is God's love. Light can reflect through us, can be transparent, it can be seen through us. This love can be seen through us. And I remember thinking, a city on a hill can't be hid. What does that mean? Are we light and a city? No, that's not what it means. It means that all of us together, with all of our light, if we have God's love in us, if we are together, then we are a city. And that light cannot be hidden. We are not meant to exist alone in God's love, but rather to show God's love in this light together. If you look at it this way, with light as energy, this God energy, then the next part of it that says, a lamp is not put under a bushel basket to be hidden, but rather on a lampstand so that it lights up the whole house. Well, that seems like it makes sense. When I was younger, I always thought about, well, didn't they have candles? Of course they wouldn't put it under a basket, it would set it on fire. That, that, you know how a child's mind works, this, is, this made sense to me. Of course you wouldn't put it under a basket, it's gonna set it on fire. But that, even that, if you think about it, makes a lot of sense. We have a tendency to hide what it is that God gives us. God gives us this light, and we allow people who come towards us and talk crazy and the things we hear in the world to dim our light, but that is not what it's meant to do. When we establish this relationship with God, this relationship through Jesus with God, this light comes into us and we are to show it. That is why we gather together with people like us. Because together there is light that we are shown. We are a city on a hill not to be hidden away, but rather to show this love to everybody. Dave had to tell everybody I've been around for a while. I may or may not deny that number of years, but it has been that number of years. It's one of the things that I love about this church. You have made a decision to be that light on a hill in spite of everything. You must make that decision not only in your, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. We, when I was growing up, we sang in this little light of mine. And we used to sing it <laughs> and clap and, you know, I'm going to let it shine on oh, this little light of mine. But I never really thought about what it meant. That and Jesus is the light, light of the world. Jesus is the light of the world, but Jesus is also our light. It is the light that we shine. He's ever shining in my soul. He's not shining there for just us. No matter how dark it got in that house, I could walk around and it didn't make one bit of difference. It was still dark. So it's not a physical light that we are talking about but rather the light of God's love that we can show to people who need it. And sometimes we talk about going into the world and, and, and it's not always about the people who we think need it. Sometimes it's just the people in our families or a friend. We must get to the poor, yes. We must get to the needy. We must get to the hungry. But sometimes we also need to get to our families. 
We must get to our friends. So please make sure that you are getting to everybody. Also make sure you're getting to yourself. God's love is reflected in you, through you, for you too. A city is never one person. The next thing is, be sure that you show your works. Now, in a lot of ways, sometimes I think about the scripture, it may be contradictory to some of the things that are said in scripture. This is not about you going around boasting about what you do. Hey, y'all, look what I did. I showed God's love today. It's not about that. Because you see, if you are who God has made you to be, if you are who God says you are, people will know you in the midst of a crowd. Have you ever been someplace and someone has just sort of looked at you? Or someone may have said to you, you're different. Now, you may have gotten offended at that. But perhaps that wasn't what they were saying. We are God's people. The sheep of his pasture. And God's love should be reflected through us. And God's works should show through us. The work that we do should show God's love. We don't have to say anything. But the work that we do should give glory to God. And people should see the work that we do and give glory to God the Father. Not to us. Because we should know better. We should know that the work that we do does not come from us. We can't give breath to our bodies. We cannot create light. We can't even create the ice that created that storm. We cannot create the snow. Meteorologists can explain it, but they don't even do a good job of accurately predicting it. They do a better job now. But think about it. I've never been one that had a problem with science and God. I've never been that person. Because I believe that I don't care how much science explains, there's still a lot that belongs to God. At the end of the day, you can explain all you want to, but when you get through explaining, what about that? But I also believe that about love. God's love is different. And I think that's what Jesus was doing as he was setting the foundation for these disciples and for the crowds. There is a different light, he's saying, that I am bringing into the world, that I want you. Yes, there is already this light, this physical light, but I know of a light that is not here, and I'm bringing it to you to bring into the world. This light is different. It is God's love that you can reflect. It is God's love that you can show. It is God's love that touches people. It is God's love that heals people. And sometimes you may not be able to go and touch somebody and heal them, but sometimes your presence heals. If someone is mourning, your presence may heal them. Sometimes you don't need to talk, you just need to be there. You are the light of the world. And this light that you have really isn't a little light of mine. It actually is a big light. If you choose, 
And that's the thing about it. Do you choose to let it shine? Because it is a choice. This light of God's love that we have in us. But it, it, you have to choose to reflect it, to let it show through you. Because we live in a world now that doesn't mind dulling your light. As a matter of fact, does not mind shutting it down. Think about how often and how many people would not care if you never showed a lick of God's love. Or if you changed it, rearranged it, or showed it in a way that is not congruent with Scripture. They wouldn't care. Or if you showed it to certain people and not other people. They wouldn't care because it fits a certain agenda. That's not what we're about. We are people of God. We are the light of the world. And we are charged with being that light. Through Jesus Christ, we are charged with showing God's love in every place we go. And when we are together, we are a city on a hill that cannot be hidden. That many people that may see the works that we do and give glory to God and not to us. This little light of ours, we're going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Amen.